Hello and welcome to our YouTube channel. If you're new here, we are Meg and Cal, otherwise known as Flora and the Novice Explorers. But if you've been with us for a while, we thank you for your continuous support. You've kept us motivated and on track, and now we are really close to our end goal. But for newcomers, we are the Novice Explorers, and this blue bombshell behind us is Flora. We bought our van three years ago after stumbling upon the hashtag van life movement we saw on social media and we wanted our own slice of that very appealing pie. Mm-hmm, we sure did. <laughs> the plan initially was pretty simple. We wanted to take some time back and travel Europe, hopefully for a year, maybe even longer. And what better way to do it than in your own camper van with your home on wheels, nothing better. However, we had a few hurdles to overcome. Firstly, we didn't have the finance available to be able to buy a motorhome or camper van outright. This led us onto a different way of doing things, which was a self-build conversion. Taking this approach means that you can create something entirely bespoken, unique, and will be specific to your own requirements. Uh, and you can save a small fortune in the process too. Uh, but this led us onto our second hurdle, in that we have no practical skills or knowledge that would be required to undertake a project of this nature. Apart from the odd bit of home maintenance and GCSE woodworking class, we're severely, severely lacking. This took us on a very long road of research, late nights and freezing fingertips as we battled against the elements to make our dream a reality. Copious amounts of blood, sweat and tears also played quite a big part. Although we call it a self-build project, we've had plenty of help from friends, family and a few awesome businesses. We want to say a huge thank you to everybody that's helped us, but more on the individuals later on. So we have managed to make it to the end and we have finally got something to show for our efforts. Something that we can be truly proud of. Yeah, we're not saying we've uh, reinvented the wheel here. It is very simplistic and realistic for the skill set we have. Um, I think you'll be hard pushed to find one straight cut of wood. Yeah, it's not perfect. But it's us. And we love it. So if you'd like to follow our European adventure, then you can do so quite easily by following any of our social media accounts, but it's probably best to give us a subscribe here on our YouTube channel. Also, if you'd like a bit more information and a slight more in-depth to look at how we did things in regards to the conversion, then we've made a whole playlist here on our YouTube channel too, so feel free to check that out. We also have a blog, which is www.campcomforts.co.uk. Here you'll find plenty of useful information, uh, links, and I've also got our own special category of van life recipes that are created by me. Um, linked into this video, we've also put up a useful list of all the companies and people that have helped us along the way and also some really cool gadgets that we're also using in Flora right now. Yeah, so those links will be down below. We've only, we'll only put two links down there just to keep it clean. But as Meg said, there's a lot of information if you follow those links. Uh, so feel free to have a browse, ask us questions and yeah, just get involved if you'd like. So now the intro is out of the way, I think it's about time we take a look at Flora, our camper van and soon to be home. Woo! In a past life, Flora was a florist delivery van. We think this explains partly why she's a less common shade of Danish blue and being a florist delivery van also went towards her name. She is a 2010 VWT 5.1 T30 1.9 TDI. Long wheelbase and with 102 ponies under her hood. <clears throat> with relatively low mileage when we bought her, we knew she still had a lot of life left in her. So now for the proper exterior of the van. Uh, you might be able to tell that there is no pop top on our van. That is a common upgrade, but we've decided to use the space in a different way. As you can see, we've got a Rhino modular roof rack. This helps us make the most of the space. Uh, it spans the length and breadth of the roof and uh, we've got quite a few little gadgets and features that are installed to make our life a little bit easier on the road. We bought the roof rack off eBay. We got it for a relative steal. It was second hand so it did need a little bit of elbow grease and a lick of paint but we soon got it looking almost like new. The roof rack is home to our 255 watt solar panel our Hapro Rody 4000 roof box. Uh, we've got a ARB touring awning on the far side and we've got room for two surfboards as well. 
We'd like to take this opportunity to thank our good friend Sam for designing us a bespoke surfboard rack. Yep. Uh, he is a very good friend, a fellow van owner and my condiment brother. So shout out to Sam. Thank you very much for your hard work. We know it hasn't been easy. So the surfboard mount is in place on the roof. However, it's not quite 100% finished yet. A few little finishing touches to do, but this will just give you the, uh, the gist of what we're going for. Most of the roof space is taken up with our 255 watt solar panel. And being 255 watts, it isn't exactly small. We are making mo the most out of our solar setup as it's the only thing that we rely on for power. But more about our electrical setup later. Our roof box is a Hatpro Rodi 4000. It is very useful and keeps some of the most important equipment up in there instead of cluttering up the van. So it's supposed to, in theory, keep the van nice, tidy and organised. Yeah, it was very generously supplied by the roof box company. Um, it comes with 400 litre capacity, um, which means we can store all sorts of things like our wetsuits, our outdoor chairs, table, barbecue maybe as well up there like stuff we will want but don't necessarily need in the main portion of the van it has two gas struts which makes it very easy to open up you can put things in take things out and it will remain in place until you pull it down where you can lock it and uh, go about your daily business with a bit of peace of mind that your stuff is safe in the UK, if you're changing your V5 document, the DVLA states that you need to have a window into the living accommodation of your camper van. It also helps with the look and aesthetic of a camper van, making it look like one. This is one job that we found that we couldn't quite do ourselves. We didn't quite have the patience and the balls to do it, let's be honest. So thank the Holy Lord, Vehicle Gas Company, thank you very much for your generosity. They supplied the glass and Van House Stafford fitted the window for us like professionals they are. Thank you both guys, we couldn't have done it without you. And we've gone for a dark tinted fixed privacy window. So choosing the right awning for our conversion proved to be a little bit more difficult than we first anticipated. Uh, we found that a lot of the T5 specific awnings were very expensive and possibly slightly overpriced. So we went back to the drawing board. Eventually we found an ARB touring awning and uh, we discovered that sort of functionality and build quality were at the top of their list and we have got ourselves a little corker. It measures 2.5 by 2.5 and it fits our van perfectly. It's manually deployable and our record time is 2.6 seconds in putting it up. We couldn't resist the optional add-on of a four-sided room, also created by ARB. It fits directly to our current awning already on the van. We bought this so that we could actually have some outdoor space and the uh, luxury of being able to stand up seemed very beneficial to us as well. Um, this is great. If privacy is paramount, then you can have all the sides zipped up and no one can see in. If you want a bit of a breeze, you can open up one or all of the sides. It has bug mesh as well, or you can have that completely open. Uh, to the elements depending what you want. It's very versatile and very handy. And down here on the undercarriage we have fitted a pair of black bars, one on each side. Um, they have very little practical benefits and um, we did think that there might be a few but no there absolutely is not and these are here just purely for our blue and black aesthetic. We like to give a big thank you and shout out to Ollie who helped us weld them on when the buggers wouldn't fit as they were supposed to with their awful instructions. So once again, Ollie, thank you very much. Big up, big up. And while I am still sat down here, another heartfelt apology this time to Greg. Um, unfortunately, we haven't had the finances to be able to put on a pair of alloys. Um, we're trying to rank necessary things. They do look lovely. And thank you very much, Greg. Every time we post a video, he wants to know if we've done anything with the alloys. We would love some and we would like some blingy blingy bad boys, but necessity. Sorry, Greg, I don't want to let you down, but I feel as if we have. On the rear of the van, we find our Fiamma bike rack. It's the one that fits the barn doors. This is going to allow us to take two push bikes with us to Europe. This will also allow us to leave the van situated and we, while we go off exploring on the bikes. 
these can be really expensive brand new so Shakara we bought our second hand off of eBay for a relative steal. It also allows you to access the back door at the same time but it is a little bit cumbersome. So as you can see on the two front windows we've installed these wind deflectors. Now these aren't just for the aesthetic they have uh, two or three good uses. The first one is that we can drive full speed with the windows cracked open and not have wind buffeting around our heads and making it unbearable. Secondly, they're a good source of ventilation, uh, which means when we're sleeping or cooking and the weather's not so good, we can crack the windows down and no rain's going to get in, but we're going to get some nice air circulating, circulating around the van. And last but by no means least for the exterior of the van is this. This is a deluxe windscreen cover made by Fuel Lagoon. Uh, they actually printed our own logo onto the front of the screen and it looks absolutely fantastic. We'll be using this windscreen cover year round, whether it's to keep the frost off the windscreen or keep the sun out in the summer, this will come in handy quite a few times, I imagine, on the road. So once again, a massive thank you to Fuel Lagoon for our windscreen cover. We absolutely love it and we'll be using it time and time again. So that's it for the exterior. The interior, we think we've put our stamp on in a totally different way. You won't be expecting what's inside from the outside. A lot of the outside exterior bits are things that we've bought and sourced from different places to make our life easier on the road. But inside, a bit of a different story. Let's go and have a look. Is that a one take wonder? Did you like that? The cab in our van is pretty standard. We haven't really done anything to it. We just want to keep it clean and tidy. There are a couple of changes to mention. One being the upholstery. So our upholstery is 100% unique. It was designed by myself and Meg and brought to life by Joma Upholstery, who just so happens to be my sister. Uh, she started up her own business recently doing all types of upholstery. If you're uh, interested, please follow the links down below and they'll take you to her Facebook page and Instagram. And I'd just like to say again a big thank you to my sister, Joan Repulsory, for doing such a lovely job throughout the van. We'll show you more later. We've used a grey Napa AquaClean as part of our seat. This is really high quality stuff. It's eco-friendly, it's durable, it's got a 250,000 rub count and it feels like suede. This lighter fabric we had our eye on for a while. Uh, we had a few issues trying to source it in this country, but in the end we managed to source it from its manufacturer in Belgium and managed to get it shipped over. We've also had our logo stitched into the headrest. We think it's a lovely finishing touch. We've had the front seats and the bed designed in the same material, so we'll show you more of the bed later. To make use of the somewhat limited space in our van, we decided to install a swivel base under our double passenger seat, as you can see here. It's a Kira Vans product and comes safety rated and all the other bells and whistles you'd expect too. You can still use the storage underneath, however, that does require the purchase of a little bit of carpet, which stops the mechanism being interfered with if you put storage in. Why that doesn't come as standard with a £300 piece of kit? We're not sure. Uh, it's a little bit cumbersome sometimes, takes a little bit of learning to get it swiveled into position, but overall we're happy with it and it does help to extend the length of the van and create a nice seating area. This Van Diemen curtain is pretty much blackout, which is a damn good thing because we love lions. It keeps the light out in the mornings, it keeps the warmth out in the daytimes when it's really sunny, and also keeps the warmth in the main part of the van when we want it to be warm at night time. It also adds much needed privacy when we're doing a bit of stealth camping. Early on in Flora's journey, we added a new ply floor. It's 12 mil marine ply, and it's topped off with this 4.5 mil gray oak effect vinyl. The van's walls and floor have been insulated using different materials. We've had new ply walls fitted, and we've covered them with gray four-way stretch carpet. This has made it really warm and feel a lot more cozy. So, as we mentioned earlier, we've decided to go with the same design for both our bed and our seats. Uh, this just helps to tie the whole van's interior design together nicely. 
We've gone for a bit of a different layout in our T5. We wanted to be able to move through the van more freely. Uh, so the bench bed that we've designed ourselves and made by hand behind the driver's seat was the best option for us. It kills many birds with one stone. There's plenty of storage space underneath and it's plenty of seating area when we want to get our table out. The length of the bed is 182 centimetres, which is just over what the DVLA stipulates it must be. In the bench position, it's 76 centimetres wide, but once we pull it out, it extends to 123. This puts it just about the same size as a small double bed, which is absolutely perfect for us. So for the bed itself, we've used a three inch standard foam topped with a one inch memory foam topper. We got this from Ace Foam in Telford, Shropshire. Thank you guys for helping us find the most comfortable bed ever. We sent off our measurements and within a week it was delivered and all the pieces were ready to be upholstered. Once the bed was upholstered, we added Velcro to the underside of the foam and also to the top of the slats that move. So in theory, when you pull the bed out, everything seamlessly glides and moves together. Uh, to make this process easier, we added some felt to the bottom of the wood that supports the bed so it glides along our vinyl floor a little bit easier and causes less damage, at least in theory. Touch wood. On the end of the bed here, we've placed all of our electrical switches and gadgets. This is kind of out the way to keep them hidden because they don't look that nice. Sometimes it's a bit of a pain in the butt to reach, but at least they're out the way. We've also got our two LED light switches down there too. So for lighting, we've decided to go with LEDs. We've installed four in total. They're super low profile and very low power consumption. They draw about 3.5 watts, and when they're all switched on, they'll draw less than an amp from the battery, so these will run and run and run. Uh, they should last about 50,000 hours if we're lucky. They also give off a nice warm glow, which helps make the van feel that bit warmer on those colder nights. When the LEDs get a little bit too bright and we want to create a bit of a romantic ambiance, we turn our copper wire fairy lights on. They're gently stapled in and they come with a lovely little remote which we velcro to the side so easy access. They're powered by our battery bank which is rechargeable on our solar system and they're just really lovely and create a really warm atmosphere. Also at the end of the bed we have our two USB charging points. These are great for phones, camera batteries, all little gadgety knickknacks like that. And we also have one 12 volt outlet which we use for this. This is a 300 watt pure sine wave inverter. We use this pretty much just for charging our laptop as we've tried to keep everything else 12 volt as to minimize power loss. We also have this bit of kit, which is to plug into the mains on campsites. It's a three pin, you know the jobby. And this has got four. Oh, it's got three. Oh, it's got three. <laughs> we thought there was four. <laughs> um, our plugs. This is just to make the most of the campsites when we're there and also give our solar a rest. Yeah, and obviously we did the electrics ourselves. Uh, 12 volt we didn't mind messing around with and learning about that. Uh, this much power is a little bit scary and definitely something we didn't want to do on our first self-build, so that's why we have this. As always, if there's anything we've shown today that takes your fancy, please follow the links below and uh, we've compiled a huge list of everything we could think of that went into this build, so please feel free to check those out after you finish watching the tour video. Okay, so now we've come to the final gadget that's installed at the end of the bed. For me, it's one of my favourites. It's the PU27 control unit for our 2 kilowatt plane, our heater. We had this fitted a few months ago and it's been a complete game changer. Uh, it means that we can camp all year round and venture into colder climates without the fear of freezing to death. After we had our diesel heater fitted, the guys at Planar were very generous and gave us a plug and play little add-on. It's the mobile modem, which allows us to use our heater anywhere with the use of our mobile app. So it's great when we're coming in from a cold walk and want the van to be lovely and toasty. So once again, thank you guys at Planar. We really do appreciate it. Yeah, and we can't recommend the heater enough. It's been perfect thus far and we look forward to using it in the future. Because of its compact size, we've had our plane, our diesel heater, installed underneath the driver's seat. Often this is reserved for leisure batteries, but as we've got two larger batteries underneath the bed, this would otherwise be dead space, so it made perfect sense to put it here. The heat outlet is just behind the driver's seat here and between the bed, which gives you a nice warming blast as you come in through the side loading door. So we've tried our very best to make the most out of every inch of space inside the van and underneath the bed is no exception. 
This is where we've decided to house all of the van's electrics. We've since blocked it off to protect it from any damage, but that is where the leisure batteries are, the charge controller from the solar panel, uh, and all our other little gadgets and gizmos, which I'll discuss now. So we've gone for two leisure batteries. We have two 100 amp hour AGM leisure batteries and they are wired in parallel. That means that we double our capacity but keep everything to 12 volts. So we bought our batteries from Alpha Batteries. We purchased them online and they were incredibly helpful in pointing us in the right direction as to what would be best for our setup. So a massive thank you to the guys there for helping us get this up and running and working absolutely perfectly. So to charge our batteries, obviously we have our solar panel and in between those two sits our MPPT charge controller. It's a Tracer 2215BN and it's a wonderful bit of kit. It's got all the safety features that you'd want to see on an electrical item like this and it runs completely silent. You won't even know it's there. Um, it's a really good bit of kit and we can't recommend it highly enough. It squeezes every ounce of sunlight and puts it into the batteries and it does a wonderful job. So. And a very useful optional upgrade for the MPPT charge controller is a little MT50 display. So the MT50 is a really, really good little bit of kit that we would recommend uh, you plug into your MPPT charge controller. What it does is show you the current state of the batteries, how much power you've got coming in, how much you've got going out, how much power you've generated. It's just really useful and helps you uh, to monitor the status of your batteries a lot easier. So uh, definitely recommend that. And under the bed we have yet more USB charging points. These are useful for all of our camera batteries and little gadgets and gizmos we use to record videos. Obviously we get through batteries very quickly, so what we've done is velcro down the charging units on top of our safe that's underneath the bed and they're permanently plugged in and we just flick a switch and they can charge under the bed, out of the way, peace of mind. We know where they are, we know where they live and it's a it's very useful little storing point. <laughs> As Callum has already mentioned, we do have a safe in our van, as well as many other security features, just to try and keep our van and possessions as safe as we possibly can. We also have a little toolbox in the van, just to keep on top of all the van maintenance and keep up its interior. It's held into place by two little wooden blocks. So a later addition to the van, we've put in these motion sensor lights. They're powered by rechargeable batteries, they're self-adhesive and just make it a lot easier in the middle of the night when you need to find something. You'll find them in a fair few of the cupboards in the back of the van too. So here is another Kira Vans product. This is another one that helps us utilise as much space as we've got in our van. It's called the Kira Vans Door Store. It clips into the existing holes in the sliding door. Uh, it's got enough room for some small pieces of equipment and knickknacks. We've got some pegs, a blind and the good old poo shovel. But you've got to be careful that anything that protrudes out of the shelves could scratch the van and give you a nasty mark. So it's useful, but nothing too big can be stored in here. So now we're finally onto the furniture that's inside the van. For the first piece we made, we did cheat a little bit, cut a few corners. Uh, we found some commercial van trading racking on eBay that was sold by Dima Van. And what we did was cut up some pallet wood, painted it grey, and as you can see, made it our own. We added these pallet wood doors. We loved the texture of the pallet wood, but we wanted to add a bit of colour. So we used some Annie Sloan chalk paint on the odd one or two, and then distressed it with some dark wax. We've also added these driftwood door stops. This stops the cupboard from opening. We did have uh, magnetic ones in there before, but they were a bit rubbish and they keep opening all the time. So with the squeaking and stuff, we couldn't hack it. So these work really well. They keep them in place and yeah, really happy with the way that they look. Throughout the van, we've used rope as our opening mechanisms, just because we don't want to brush past it, cag our clothes, hurt ourselves, because the amount of times we do that anyway is quite ridiculous. So yeah, these are soft, supple, and just move out the way when you brush past them. So on this side of the unit, we've applied some self-adhesive cork. This gives a really nice look and feel, and we use it for pinning various memories and bits and bobs too. And we've also installed a few rustic looking coat hooks as well. And in this cupboard, we keep all of our personal belongings and most of our clothing. We are using these packing cubes. Two different colours, Cal's blue, I'm grey. Two, two lots of different sizes, four of each. Being honest, I thought I was the 
original creator of this hack, but I'm not, and I'm really upset about it, but I thought it was a pretty cool idea. So these all get stalled in here, and it's easy to just grab out whatever you need. So in all of our cupboards, we've got this non-slip rubber matting, which helps things not move whilst we're driving. As you can see in this one too, we've got our motion sensor lights. When reclassifying your vehicle, the DVLA stipulates that you must have a table. It must be mounted to the structure of the van, but it can be removable. This is where we keep ours down here. It is kept in place with grey bungee cord, eyelets and some carabiners. So for the table design, we had to get a little bit imaginative. First off, we found a kit at VanFest, which includes a retractable leg, that height adjusts. Look at that, do it properly mega. Woohoo! It also comes with two clips and the rail, which we have mounted to our sliding door. We've added felt to stop it from damaging that piece of furniture that it sits against, and we've made it out of pallet wood in a very similar design to our cupboard doors. The design for this unit centered around our 25 litre fresh water tank and our gas bottle and also our cooking unit which we'll show you later. So this unit contains various bits and bobs that once again were required by the DVLA to change this from a van to a motor caravan and we'll show you some more of those in a second. So in here if you remove this cover which also doubles as a lap tray, got our 25 litre fresh water tank and our gas bottle. The gas bottle is currently Caller, but when we go to Europe, we will be changing it for a camping gas one. So we added a shelf to this side to make two different cupboards to store our food and our equipment. And then inside, we've got our rubber matting and grey storage boxes to make it easy and organised. We've got our brass gripper catches, which are the perfect thing for this sort of cupboard. They work really well. One design flaw that we must mention because this is when we say it's not perfect. It doesn't quite open up all the way. Catch on that. We had such issues with hinges that I never ever want to see one ever, ever again. In here, this is where you can get access to the cooker. Got a little cutlery pot. <clears throat> again, using our brush catches. I had a vision about this countertop before we even started making it. I wanted to make it out of something different. We found this old door at a reclamation yard and decided that it's what we were going to do. It was quite nerve wracking because if we made a wrong cut, all it would be good for was firewood. So lift this part of it up and you uncover our cooker, which is a good old camping gas cooker, a little bit battered and bruised, but it works really efficiently. We've had an aluminium heat surround to stop the heat from transferring to the wood, which is a safety feature. And the lid stays up with these toy box door stays, which are semi soft close. How lovely. So cooker. We've also made this spice rack style shelf. This just houses easy to reach things, all our mugs, coffee, tea and stuff like that. Another thing that surprised us when we were putting this unit together was the lack of a nice camper van tap. There is quite a big selection out there, but none of them would have really suited the aesthetic we were going for. Fortunately, after a bit of research, we realized we could work around this. So what we have here is a copper tap, and as you can see, it swivels, which is very handy. We had this custom made from a seller on eBay. He did a wonderful job, much better than we could have done, but um, I know some of you out there could knock one of these up pretty quickly. All we did was send him our dimensions of what we needed, so we measured our tallest pots and pans and made sure they slipped under the tap with ease. As this tap isn't specifically designed for a camper van, uh, it comes with no electrics, no micro switches, nothing fancy at all, which means we had to design our own water system to get it working. Now, we haven't done anything too fancy. We don't have hot water, we just have running water from our 25 litre fresh tank down there. Inside there is a 12 volt whale um, submersible pump. In between the tap and the pump is a pressure switch. So what basically happens when we turn the tap on, the pressure in the system changes, the pressure switch notices that, activates the pump, the pump pumps the water up and out through the tap. It's all really rather simplistic and just to prevent any potential accidents we do have a switch 
just here which cuts power completely to the tap so we won't accidentally uh, turn the tap on without anything underneath which brings me to my next point to make the most of this surface and make it multifunctional we have not got a sink installed into the unit we do have a sink but it's removable we intend to do most of the washing up sort of outside the van or where it's more comfortable to do so we didn't feel comfortable sacrificing so much um, space for the sake of a sink so maybe it will be a little bit of a nuisance but we felt that was the best way to go and the best way to utilize this space and to complement our copper tap we have installed a couple of these copper towel rails which are very useful for little knickknacks socks discloths whatever you like this little cupboard here first started life as a bedside table but we've repurposed it another little bit of a cheaty bit of furniture we had to cut the back off of it and it fit really nice in this position we've added a new top new drawer front new door with our matching rope handles and driftwood stay here we keep easy to reach things this cupboard you can't access when the bed's out so you've got to be careful with what you put in there and then on the top we've added another spice rack style shelf again easy to reach things and I think it looks really lovely a little bit of cork cork board here too another towel rail to emphasize our copper theme and a little sweepy up brush we already know we need to keep this van clean, tidy and organised and everything needs to have a home. We can't let it get too messy, otherwise it's not going to be that nice of a home environment. The storage bins that we've already talked about, so we've got the packing cubes and the storage boxes, all of those will help make our life slightly easier. We have been going through a bit of a minimalism journey at the moment, from things that we own to things that we're even taking on this trip. Do we really need them and have we got space in this very small van? One thing you should never overlook when embarking on a journey is safety and here we have our fire extinguisher and carbon monoxide alarm both in easy reach and we have of course our first aid kit which looks like it's more likely to give you tetanus than anything else but it's useful to have anyway. It's got all the stuff you'd ever want in case you hurt yourself on the road. Hopefully you won't have to use this but it's good to have it anyway. So now we're nearing the end of our tour video, there may be some of you wondering where our toilet and general facilities are. We haven't got any. The van is never going to be big enough for a big shower cubicle or toilet. So instead, we'll be using campsites, public restrooms, good old mother nature, and in emergency situations in the van, we've got these bad boys, little wee wee bottles. Uh, we picked these up from a chemist, but <laughs> if you get some, I highly recommend you get some with a screw cap because these are just a pop on cap but I feel as if there could be an epic mess if one lid pops off just for wee wee so not epic epic mess but enough mess to go oh no so for our last piece of kit to show you this is the Dometic board bar cool box yeah this is what we will be using to keep our perishable goods cool um, I would say this is probably the biggest regret from our van conversion. We didn't allow enough space for a good compressor fridge, so this will have to make do. It's okay, I mean you can take it with you outside the van, but unfortunately it doesn't have a proper home, it just sort of floats around the van and it draws 3 amps from the battery roughly and that's constant, so it's not exactly efficient, but it's what we have for the time being, so maybe we'll just have to change our diets up slightly. Yeah, diets and shopping habits. I think we'll just hold less food and shop for more fresh options. Yeah, but that's, like I said, probably our one regret and one thing we put higher up the list for our next build, especially with Meg being a chef. She does like good, fresh produce. So that pretty much concludes our tour video, I think. Yeah. We're not really sure how you wrap up a video like this. Uh, the whole project has been a labour of love which has taken us a mm, couple or three years. Uh, it's been planned for a very long time and now we're a matter of weeks away from the end goal as we said earlier so it's it's a bit of a strange time. Exciting, um, a yeah. little bit overwhelming sometimes but we are ready-ish. 
we'd like to say a massive thank you to all our friends and family that have helped us borrow tools help us build things give us advice things like that and also a big thank you to all of the companies that have got involved and helped us too so thank you very very much without you we wouldn't have this baby if there are currently any of you out there watching this and wondering whether you should take the plunge and do a self-conversion or go on an adventure similar to ours, then we would highly recommend it. Yeah. Do it, do it, it'll be the best thing you ever do. It has been a labour of love, but we have learnt so much in the process and we're just looking forward to so many things and so many other things are now on the horizon because we've done this. Yeah, it's, it's actually changed our lives and we haven't actually really been anywhere yet, yeah. but it's had such a large impact. It's, it's been a bit unreal. So we are weeks away from leaving for Europe. So if you want to follow what we're going to get up to, make sure you check out our social medias below. Give us a like and a thumbs up on this video if you have enjoyed anything we have showed you. That's it. It may be the end of the tour video, but it's just the beginning of the wider adventure, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, so thanks for sticking with us. Give us a like, give us a share, give us a subscribe. Um, because we are gonna be living the dream very, very shortly. Definitely, get in contact with us, leave comments below um, if we've inspired you all, if you think we've done something wrong. Really <laughs> stupid. Yeah. If you've missed something, if you think we've missed something, just ask, get on all of the social medias. We do try and make sure we reply to everybody. Yeah, and we appreciate everyone over the last couple of years who has interacted with us and that we've spoken to. Maybe we'll see you once we hit the road. Yeah, so. Once again from us, Flora and the Novice Explorers, good day to you. Well, thank you and we'll see you in the next one. <laughs>